Hello and welcome to the 5NL Cash Game Guide. This guide is primarily directed at 6 max, whether that be Zoom or regular cash games online. However, you're going to find a lot of useful information that is relevant to other games, you know, 2NL, uh, 10NL, the, the Super Micros. Um, all of this information is going to be relevant. I'm just going to be sharing what is specifically relevant to the 5NL cash games that I've been playing over the last few days doing research for this video. If you want to support the channel or just say thank you for making the guide, a simple like would be very appreciated. Also, a few more things. If you want to follow the video outline as I'm talking, you can view the Google Doc below and it will open a new link for you. Alternatively, there are timestamps below if you just want to scroll to specific parts of uh, the strategy video and uh, you know work on a specific part of your game that I'm going to talk about. And the last thing is worth noting, which is uh, poker will never be one size fits all. No matter how much good information I give you in this video, one player type is not just going to be at 5NL just because I say there's a lot of them. You're going to find player types of all sorts in all sorts of stakes. So while I will tell you the majority of uh, players that I found at 5NL, uh, you shouldn't take it as gospel. You should still do your own thinking, of course. Just use what I'm saying as a guideline and go from there. So when we look at 5NL, I do want to give you an overview of things you should do and things your opponents will likely be doing. So in general, I'm going to advocate for a tight aggressive strategy. Playing a strong starting range and being very average post flop is enough to crush 5NL because people have such bad habits here and they're extremely exploitable. So what I found is that a large majority, maybe 50% of players are loose passive. I noticed there was a lot of limp calling or they would open and then they would call a three bet and just play out of position. And the way that we're gonna exploit this is by value betting as big as they will call and doing it often. So if we have top pair or second pair, we're gonna be barreling a lot and just uh, forcing them to pay us and uh, either adjust their strategy or just keep losing chips. When you're in a player pool of people who never fold flop, but also never check raise, you should be betting a very high percentage of any made hands or hands with a lot of equity. Regarding bluffing at 5NL, I would say this is the least important uh, aspect of your game. We really want to focus on starting on playing good hands post flop and playing those hands for value. That's where you're going to see the vast majority of your winnings. And it's also worth noting that since players at 5NL don't like to fold, bluffing therefore is not that profitable. If you do have an extreme range advantage and an idea of how your opponent plays, of course bluffing is totally fine, but as I mentioned, um, you can just crush 5NL just by having average post-flop skills and a strong starting range. After you master those, I think it's totally fine to start mixing in some bluffs to see what you're capable of and see what you can get your opponents to fold. So now we're going to talk about game selection. So there are some differences between normal cash games online and Zoom cash games online or fast fold poker. In my opinion, you should prioritize normal cash games and of course, this is a little unfortunate because you're always going to make, you know, be playing less hands. And I personally, <laughs> I'm not the most patient person in the world, so I like fast fold poker. But in terms of maximizing your, you know, ROI on your hands played, um, regular cash games are going to be the best. And the reason for this is because uh, players at 5NL or, you know, these super low micro stakes, they're going to be extremely exploitable. They're going to be very one dimensional oftentimes. So what you can do is you can develop reads and then you can start playing in a very exploitative way. Another thing worth mentioning is that in my experience, people at, you know, 10 and L and lower, uh, they tend to not really run into a lot of crazy bets. So like 2x pot for value, you know, sometimes a good player will do that. But if you do that at, um, you know, 5 and L, a lot of people just assume you always have it. So the reason that normal cash games are nice is because you can start implementing these um, these massive bets. And if you were to play Zoom poker, for example, uh, most people are just going to assume you have it in fold. And so when you play regular, you know, regular cash games, you can implement that strategy and show people that you're willing to do that. And then you kind of force them to start making calls. And this is going to be very advantageous if you are familiar with this strategy. The reason this is nice is because you're just not going to make these kinds of huge value bets um, if people just assume you have it like they usually do in Zoom Poker. So now talking about Zoom Poker, it's going to be, you know, kind of inverted. 
So if people do always assume you have it at these low stakes, what you can do is you can simply bluff more. Uh, now this is there's a fine line because like I said earlier, people do love to call down at five and L. They especially like calling the flop in the turn. So you 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 know if you're gonna bluff, you have to be ready to fire the third barrel. But um, I do think there are some distinguishable differences between zoom poker and um, cash game, you know, regular cash games, and you can take advantage of uh, either one. So next, I'm just going to show you guys some preflop charts. Um, I'll put them on the screen, but I'm also going to provide download links, download links below. Uh, you don't have to sign up for anything. You can just go grab them. Um, you know, you can download it onto your computer. Uh, no problem. So when it comes to preflop, um, in general, you just want to start with a preflop chart and work your way out from there. So when I say out, I mean you can either open or fold more hands uh, depending on the player pool that you're playing against. So as I mentioned earlier, there are a ton of loose passive players at 5 L, which means you want to play your, you know, you, you can open up your range in position and just get ready to value bet uh, much wider. So for example, you know, queen jack offsuit, not a great hand, but not a bad hand by any means. Um, but this is one of those hands where you could even consider three betting at five and L because people do play so passive and predictably that you can just value bet top pair a lot of times. And another thing worth noting is that when people are limp calling oftentimes, which again, when you're in a pool full of loose passive players, this is absolutely going to be a thing. In that case, I do absolutely recommend opening up a lot of hands. So you can even start opening things like 8-9 offsuit, 9-10 offsuit. Of course, you know, your suited connectors, but the point is, is that if people are playing loose passive, you can just open up hands in position extremely profitably. And the reason this is especially true is because when they play so passively post-flop, you, you can just always have the betting lead and always be value betting uh, your made hands and taking free cards when you need to. Another tendency that I have found at 5 and L is that people three bet uh, very conservatively. So there are two points worth making about that. One is that you can open very wide and not worry too much about getting three bet. And if someone does three bet, they're going to have a much more defined range, you know, premium hands, jacks plus, ace king plus, just the ultra premium hands. So that means you can oftentimes just call with, you know, pocket fours or whatever. If you're getting a decent price, try to hit a set. Um, once again, if they're playing very predictably, you can have a very easily defined strategy against them. And then th the other thing is that you can also make huge folds if you are getting three bet. So, so, you know, something like ace queen offsuit, if you get three bet, you know, you don't you never need to use this as a four bet bluff um, unless you have a, again, unless you have a certain read on someone, you can just fold these hands. You don't have to. You don't have to find marginal spots and just call down in weird spots like people don't generally barrel they don't generally bluff very much so you just want to play very abc the last thing i'm going to mention about preflop and i will touch on this more is talking about blinds and stealing blinds so in general um p again people are very passive um they're either going to be defending what i have found is that people tend to defend too little from the blinds and they don't three bit enough which means uh when we are in late position and we know we're not going to get three bit often as i just mentioned what we can do is open up more hands and try to steal blinds more often and this is an easy way to increase our win rate so once again like i'm saying you can you can even open things like eight nine offsuit like if people are playing really tight which they will at five and l you can open you can open eight nine off uh, nine ten off jack nine off um in the cutoff definitely on the button and even in the small blind, once again, people are not defending very much. They fold to bets a lot post-flop. So um, just a little bit of aggression goes a long way um, when it comes to stealing blinds. So now we're gonna discuss a general post-flop strategy when it comes to 5 and L. So I've given you a lot of information so far. I've explained that most people are quite passive and they will call you down. So those are, you know, that's the general idea of things that you wanna remember. But now we're going to talk about some more spe specific things that you can do to take advantage of those kinds of players. So I believe I mentioned this earlier, but people especially like to call the flop and turn. If you were to have the stats up for some of these players on something like Poker Tracker, you would see that they have a very low fold to flop C bet percentage as well as turn C bet percentage. So when that's the case, and they also have low aggression, 
That means we can just uh, quite liberally just value bet our good hands, our second pairs with strong kickers. So of course, we're always gonna be value betting top pair. And in general, I just want you guys to value bet thin. So the next exploit, as I just mentioned, is that you pretty much never see aggression from other people unless they have it. So this makes your play quite simple. Again, we're just gonna value bet a ton. And on the other side of that, if you do run into some aggression from someone who especially hasn't shown a lot of aggression, um, again, obviously, if you're playing Zoom poker against people you don't know, you, it's, it's hard to say, but I would just err on the side of giving them credit. Um, if they do show aggression, you can start making some big folds. Um, I personally don't like calling people down at these super micro stakes because you just don't see aggression um, unless they really have it. And the last thing I'll talk about, um, which is just a, something I noticed, is that when I was value betting and I was trying to get called by going all in for like maximum value or whatever, is that people tend to snap fold really fast. So this, you know, this is something that I don't, I don't recommend doing it lightly unless you have very good reasons, but it is worth noting that um, all ins get a ton of respect at this stake because it's such a rare occurrence for them, uh, for these guys. So, you know, if you do need to make a, a crazy play like 2x pot shove for all in, um, I just noticed that the all ins just get snap folds so often and uh, it is, it's worth considering if you want to mix it in, in into your game. So now we're going to talk about how to play the blinds. So um, this is one of those areas in poker that people have a very underdeveloped strategy. And, you know, the higher stakes you go, the more developed it's going to be. And, you know, the better players you play, of course, their strategies are going to be more developed. But at these micro stakes like 5 and L, uh, people just absolutely don't have a strategy for the blinds. So what I'm going to give you is a very basic strategy that you can start implementing and just instantly increase win rate very quickly. So there are going to be players at, uh, you know, these micro stakes who do steal blinds because, you know, maybe they watched a video like mine or, you know, some other, you know, poker content creator. And they know that, you know, showing aggression in the blinds is good, which it is. That's what I want you guys to do as well. But the interesting thing is if you're playing one of these slightly better players at 5 and L, what happens is you can take them out of their comfort zone by showing more aggression. Uh, for example, raising the flop when they see bet because what happens for them is that generally their their strategy is not developed past um, very simple betting strategies. So if you start raising on these like weird boards, um, oftentimes they're not gonna try to represent something that they, they don't have they're, because they're so used to people just folding. So what am I saying here? I'm just saying um, having some raising frequency on the flop as a bluff will go very, very far. And this is true even at the stakes that I play. So. Uh, just having some sort of uh, aggression in the blinds, uh, especially post flop, um, these are all good things to have in your arsenal. The next thing regarding blinds is something I've already mentioned, which is stealing often is very recommended. Uh, once again, people under defend like crazy. They will fold hands they shouldn't be folding um, for a very good price. And a lot of times they just accept that, uh, you know, if, if this guy's gonna be uh, crazy, crazy, you know, you know, all of my, all of his buttons and all of my big blinds, a lot of times they never really fight back. And even if they do, they, they oftentimes play, they oftentimes play quite face up. So um, again, this is just going, going back to the idea that these guys don't have, you know, the average five and L player doesn't have much of a uh, drawn out strategy. So when you start implementing extra aggression, a lot of times they just don't know what to do and they just have to fold. So the last thing that I've noticed, um, and this is just this is true for post flop in general, but this is something I've especially noticed in the blinds, is that let's say we are in the small blind and we raise, uh, the big blind calls, uh, we bet flop, they call. If we check turn, what I have for some reason something about this stake is that people love to bet huge on the turn. I'm talking three quarters to pot very often. And so what I, there's no clear cut play for this. You know, if you don't have top pair, I'm not telling you to go all in as a bluff. But what I am telling you is that if, if you do have a strong hand and you do have one of these average five and L players who likes to bet really big on the turn because it does induce a lot of folds, uh, this is where you can start trapping. Um, and also it's worth noting that um, if you do have junk, uh, you, you can certainly be prepared to get blown off of it on the turn if you check. So uh, in conclusion, be prepared for some weird bet sizes, some weird lines from these guys. 
And, you know, that's kind of what I explained in the intro when I said, you know, there's no one size fits all for poker. People develop different strategies based on their own personality traits, uh, what has worked for them in the past, what they think you're doing. So there's no one size fits all. But again, these are a lot of the tendencies that I ran into in the last few days of playing 5NL. So that's going to wrap up the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I hope you uh, learned something, got some value out of it. Uh, once again, I'll ask if you did enjoy it, uh, a like would be very appreciated. Also, I have uh, affiliate links below if you want to sign up for a new poker site. I personally play on America's Card Room and Ignition, um, and I do find the games are quite good there. There's also my recommended poker course from my friend Black Rain, if you ever wanted to check that out. Um, I think he's an awesome coach, and he's been uh, very successful for a long time with poker. But uh, that's going to wrap it up. Once again, I appreciate you guys watching, and have a great day.